Hey, welcome to the Draft Academy. My name is Mike. In this tutorial, I'm gonna to talk to you guys about getting information from the database. More specifically, we're gonna look at the select keyword and we're gonna look at the different ways that we can uh, ask the database management system to give us some information back. So one of the core tenets of interacting with the database management system and using SQL is writing these little queries. And a query is essentially just a block of SQL that's designed to ask the database management system for a particular particular piece of information. And so one of the things that we need to be aware of is that when you're keeping track of, you know, huge amounts of information in a database, you want to be able to grab specific information easily. So let's say that I'm trying to, you know, grab a bunch of students from our little student table right here. Well, imagine that we had like a million students stored inside of that table, right? I might not want to just grab every single student, I might want to just grab students who meet a certain condition or students who, you know, have a certain major or students with a certain name, right? And we can use SQL queries in order to specify those things. So instead of the relational database management system giving us back all the entries in a specific table, instead it can just give us back very specific entries which meet a certain condition. So we're going to talk a little bit about the basics of doing that stuff. Now this is actually a huge topic and it's the topic that we're going to be talking about for most of the rest of the course. So uh, this is going to kind of give you guys an introduction into writing all these little queries. So over here, you'll see that I have this query here and it's just select star from student. And actually, if you want, you can put this on two different lines. A lot of people will do that. So this select keyword is a very special word. And this select keyword is basically going to tell the relational database management system that we want to get some information from it. So I can say select and then right next to it, I can specify what information I want to get. Now, so far in this course, we've been using this star or this asterisk. And basically the asterisk means that we want to grab all of the information. But if we wanted, we could specify a specific column. So we're, we can select specific columns of information that we want to get back from the database management system and then we can say from whichever table so select uh, star from table could also be read as select every column from the student table so uh, over here you'll see when I run this we get this information down here so we're getting all of the students in the table um, we're getting their student IDs and their names and their majors. If I wanted, I could change the columns up here though. So I could say like uh, name. And now what this will do is it'll select all of the names from the student table. So if I was to run this query, you'll see down here we get just the names. So we have the name and then it's Jack, Kate, Claire, Jack, and Mike. So these are all of the names that were stored inside of the database. I could also include something else. So I could say name, major, from student and then down here when I run this query you'll see we're getting the students names and the majors but we're not getting the students ID so we're able to specify which specific columns we want to get back you could also prepend these with the name of the table so I could say like student dot name and student dot major and sometimes people will do this just because student dot name it's clear which table the name is coming from and as we write more and more complex queries that can come in handy more so for the most part i'm probably going to be writing them uh, both ways just depending on the situation but you could do something like this we can also order the information that we get back so uh, here i'm getting the student's name and the student's major from student and if i wanted i could order that information so i could use another command which is order by and then over here I can just put the name of the column that I want to order these by so I could say order by name and now when I run this you'll see we get the same results but they're in alphabetical order based off the name so we get Claire Jack Jack Kate and Mike so these are now ordered in alphabetical order um, and by default these are going to be in ascending order but if you wanted you could put them in descending order so you could say DESC and this stands for descending so now if I run this you'll see that all the names get returned in the opposite order. So Claire is all the way at the bottom and then we go all the way back up to Mike. So uh, you could order by anything. So I could even order by like student ID. So I'm not returning the student ID. In other words, I'm not getting the student ID up here, but I could still order by it. And so now these are going to be in descending order of student IDs. So actually, why don't we just get all of these now? So I'll just say select all from student 
and you'll see now it's ordered in descending order by student ID. It's a little bit clearer, five, four, three, two, one, but I could also get rid of it or I could just say ASC, which stands for ascending, and now it will order them in ascending order. So you can order uh, by a bunch of different stuff. You can also order by um, different sub columns. So I could say like order by, and we'll start with major, and then after that we'll do student ID. So select all from student order by major and then student ID. So it's gonna order them by major first. And then if there's any of them that have the same major, it'll order them by student ID further. So I'm gonna run this and you'll see down here, it's ordering everybody by major. So we're getting biology, biology, chemistry, computer science, sociology. In this case, these two students have the same major. They also have the same name too, uh, but their student IDs are different. So the student IDs are now ordered in ascending order. But if I said, descending right here and I run this query. Now you'll notice that the biology major with student ID four came first and then one. So it ordered it uh, first by major and then within that, if they have the same major, it ordered them by student ID. And you can specify uh, as many of those as you want. You could also limit the amount of results you're getting. So I could say like select all from student and then I could say limit and here I could put like two. And now what this will do is it'll limit the results I get back to two. So now instead of getting all the students back, we only got two. So if you only want like a specific number of rows back from the table, then you'll only get that. And you can also combine these. So I could also like order them. So I could say order by student ID descending. So now this is gonna select all the students, order them by student ID and only give us two of them back. So now when I run this, you'll see we're getting two back and it's ordering them in descending order by student ID. So that can be pretty useful and that's just another way that you can make these uh, more complex. The final thing that we can do that I'm gonna show you guys in this tutorial is filtering. So I could say where. So if you remember uh, in a previous tutorial, we were updating and deleting students and we uh, wanted to only update or delete specific students where certain conditions were true. And we use this where condition. You can do the same thing for select. So I could say like select uh, all from student where major is equal to biology. And so now this is only going to give us the students who are biology majors. And you can see down here, we get back the two Jacks who are both biology majors. You can do the same thing for chemistry. So let's see if we have any chemistry majors. We do looks like Claire is a chemistry major. And if you wanted, we could only return specific uh, columns. Like I said, so we could say select, uh, you know, the name and major from student where major is chemistry. And now we're only getting the name and the major back. And you can make these more complex. So I could say like where uh, major is equal to chemistry or major is equal to biology. And so now this will give us all of the chemistry and the biology majors. So we get the two Jacks and Claire. And we could also do different things. So I could say like where major is equal to chemistry or name is equal to Kate. And so now we'll get back any of those students. So we get back Kate and Claire and they have different majors. So you can play around with those where statements to get specific entries from the individual table. So I, I wanna talk to you guys about um, how we can make these where's a little bit more complex. So obviously over here we're using equals, but there's a bunch of other stuff you could use too. So, uh, and this is actually a comment in SQL. So if you put two um, dashes, then anything after it is gonna be a comment. Um, but here I have all the different comparison operators. So we're, we have equals, we also have less than, greater than, less than or equal to, greater than, equal to, equal to, uh, not equal to, which is these uh, less than, greater than signs, and then and and or. So you guys have seen some of these, um, but we could use these. So I could say like major not equal to chemistry. So this is gonna select all the students where the major is not equal to chemistry. So if I run this, now we get all the students except Claire because Claire is a chemistry major. Or we could do the same thing for numbers. So I could say like student ID. So select all the students where student ID is less than three. And we need to get rid of this. So now we'll get all the students who have student IDs. And let me get all of these. So we're only getting students one and two, we're not getting anything. Or we could do less than equal to three, and now this will also give us that uh, student ID equal to three. And you could combine these. So like where student ID is less than three and name is not equal to Jack. So if we run this now, you'll see we get Kate and Claire, but we don't get Jack who is student ID number one 
because it didn't fit the condition. So you can use all of these comparison operators to compare, uh, you know, different things. And by using them inside of this where statement over here, you can like seriously filter the results down to only like the few that you need. All right, so I wanna show you guys one more cool thing we can do, which is using the in keyword. So um, instead of just like putting a little uh, condition like this, we could say where, and then we could say like the name of one of the columns, so like name, and then I can say in, and then over here I can put some parentheses and I can put some values in here. So if the name is Claire, Kate or Mike. So basically what this is saying is select all from student where the name is in these, like this group of values, right? So if the name is Claire, Kate or Mike, then it's gonna select that. So now I can click run and you'll see down here, we get all the entry, all the entries, uh, Kate, Claire and Mike. So this is a really easy way to compare like one column to a bunch of different values. So like we could check to see if uh, the name is in there. We could also do the same thing for like major. So like where major in biology or chemistry and now if we run this you'll see that we get jack and claire because they're both biology so uh that's we can use in and you can also combine all these things together so you could say like where major in biology and chemistry and uh student id is greater than two right and now i'll click run and you'll see that we get these two students, right? So you can combine the selects and the where's and even like the limits and all that other stuff uh, to make these kind of, you know, complex queries. But that's sort of the basics of, you know, doing these queries. I mean, obviously these are very simple queries and as the database schemas get more complex, the queries that you need to select specific pieces of information are also gonna get more complex. Now we're just using one table here, right? We're just getting information from the student table. But if we had multiple different tables, you know, maybe certain tables had like foreign keys to other tables, like getting information can get pretty complex. And as we go forward in the course, we're actually gonna design a more complex database schema. And using that uh, database schema, we're gonna learn more about using these select commands. But for now, that kind of shows you guys the basics. And so what you wanna do is just kind of play around with these, right? I mean, we have our student table, it's very simple, it has three columns, and you know, just play around with getting specific pieces of information using these you know, where's and ends and all these different keywords in order to uh, select the information that you want. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe to Draft Academy to be the first to know when we release new content. Also, we're always looking to improve, so if you have any constructive criticism or questions or anything, leave a comment below. Finally, if you're enjoying Draft Academy and you want to help us grow, head over to draftacademy.com forward slash contribute and invest in our future.